Welcome back. The next thing we're going to learn about is this very important function called fscanf or uh, scanf, and it's the counterpoint to printf. So printf is used is the real C uh, function to print out a bunch of mixed like a uh, string and a character and an int and some stuff in between like we learned about uh, before. Now we're going to learn about scanf, which is the way to read in um, all kinds of different types of input from files or from the terminal or wherever. So the format of calling fscanf is very similar to what we saw from calling printf. Um, the command is fscanf then you have the stream that it's coming from. So maybe in the typical situation, this will just be standard in. Then you have um, a format string, and this might be just a percent sign and uh, the type of thing that you wanna read. So maybe percent %d to read in an int. And then you have the variable that you want to read into. So if I have int x, then I can have x. Wait, no, I cannot. I need to have the address of x. So like we talked about in the last uh, lesson, the point, pointers are needed to when we, when we want to tell this function to actually change the value of x. So we need to pass the address of x, not the uh, original value of x. So in general, this is going to be the, um, the format of a fscanf command is we have some stream that should be an input stream, but it could be a file stream or it could be standard in. Then we have a format string that's very similar to and will look similar to the format string of a fprintf function, and it could have more than one um, format specifier. And then what we have is the arguments after that, but these are all going to need to be addresses um, or pointers to each um, variable or each thing we want to read into. Okay, so the, the main difference is, in terms of what it looks like, is that instead of passing the actual values, we're going to pass in pointers in order to make the scanf work. So let's look at actually some specific examples, because I think when we try to do a little bit of something, we'll, we'll see uh, more how this works. Let's imagine that we want to, if we want to just read in a number, just, we can have int n, and I would say, printf give me a number then I'm gonna flush standard out to make sure that shows up before I try to read something in then f scan f uh, from standard in percent D remember uh, that's the format specifier we're going to use for ints and then I would say the address of n and then I can say n equals so notice that in scanf and printf, I'm both using the percent %d here, but for scanf, I use percent %n, and for printf, I use just n itself, because uh, scanf always has to take in some address in order to change that original thing. So let's make this and run it, and great. So far, so good. Uh, now we can also read in multiple numbers. So if I say, give me two numbers, then I can just put multiple um, format specifiers here. And that's totally fine. So let's check this out. Uh, so n equals that. I guess I should change it here, m equals whatever m equals. Okay, so this will work like 10 and 20 and great. So we can read in multiple things. Now, what's interesting with scanf is what else we can put into this format string. So we can also put white space, although the white space around um, percent %d is optional. But what the white space does is say, tell scanf to skip any amount of white space. So notice that I had a space in between the two numbers there. I could have a more amount of space in between those as well. And the space says explicitly skip 
white space. Um, it's kind of implied if we are reading in a numeric type, um, but it's uh, not a bad idea to put it in your scanf string because for like reading in a single chart, it's not implied. Um, okay, so that means skip white space, but we can also put in any other character. And what that means is that the scanf is supposed to read, in this case, it's saying skip any white space that you have, like spaces or tabs or enters, then read in a number and store that number into the address of n, then skip more white space, then read in a slash character, then read in skip more white space, and then read in one more number and store that into m. So now this, this kind of a format string can be used to get like a fraction. Give me uh, a fraction. So we can say like one divided by two, and that works, but we don't have to have the white space either. So that when we have a space in our scanf that says skip any white space that's there, but if there's no white space there, then it doesn't skip anything. And so this works just the same. Now you should be thinking, what happens if we don't put that slash character there? So what if I just do like one space two? Hmm, it looks like m uh, is equal to zero here instead of two. And the same thing would happen if I put like a different character that wasn't a uh, slash and would get set to zero. So what you're noticing is that you might expect that to be an error. Like similarly, if I run scanf and I just type something that's total nonsense, um, then it just sets them both equal to zero, it looks like. Uh, and it doesn't doesn't like blow up, doesn't say, hey, you're supposed to enter a number or something like that. So this is a property that tends to happen with the kind of real um, C commands is that they don't like show an error message if something happens. What What's actually happening with scanf is that it uses a return value to indicate what went wrong. So if we look at the documentation for scanf, you'll see that it returns an int. And the int that gets returned is equal to how many things were read in. So I can say um, things were read in successfully. And so the uh, scanf was actually telling us that things went wrong in those previous examples, but we just weren't saving the return value from the function, so our program didn't notice it. So if I run this now again, uh, if I do like one hand, then it says two things were read in successfully. But if I run this and say uh, something like one minus two, then it tells us only one thing was read in successfully. So, and when it and when that happens, it's kind of undetermined what the second one will end up as. So, in the previous examples, it always ended up as zero, but in this case, it ended up as some other number. Um, so, you can't depend on what that value is going to be if it wasn't read in successfully. Uh, and if I type in just a bunch of garbage, like no numbers, then I'll say zero things were read in successfully. So it's usually a good idea when you're calling fscanf to have some kind of check. In this case, we could save the return value in a variable and then print this message out, but it's more common that we would just say something like if this is not equal to two, because we expect it to be two, meaning that it read in two things, then uh, we can print like an error message um, need two numbers and a slash and then I could return an error code. So this will kind of do the thing that we want our program to do now, which is to, if it reads in those things successfully, then that's great. It'll go on to the last part of the program. But if it doesn't successfully read in two values, then we'll get this error message here. Now back to thinking about this. So that's the basic of how scanf works with ints, but it works a little bit differently with different types. So what are the different fscanf uh, format specifiers? Well, we have to think about what are the different types of things that we know about. So for int, then it's just uh, percent %d. So we can do scanf, and I'm already tired of writing f scanf, so I'll tell you that the shortcut is we can have um, 
just scanf, and that means that you can leave off the first argument, which is the stream. And as you might guess, scanf by default reads from standard in. So usually when we're reading from standard in, we just write scanf, not f scanf with std in, because we get to save some typing. Okay, so that's how that works. Um, if I have a double, this you'll remember that the printf format for double is percent %g. And unfortunately for doubles, it's not percent %g, it's percent %lg. So that's a lowercase l, <laughs> uh, which I don't know how to... Uh, to write any better, but just to tell you that it's not a number one, it's a lowercase l, and then we would give the address of y in this case. And the reason why you need that is because by default, um, percent %g tries to read into a float, which is half as long as a double, so you have to say, for scanf, you have to say this is a long one. That's what the l stands for. But just remember that percent %lg is used in scanf for doubles. Uh, then what about chars? This one is has a, a specific pitfall that I already mentioned, and it's just that we usually want to use a space when we're reading in a char. And the reason for that, and it, of course you could name this whatever you want, maybe it's confusing to say C, so I'll just say Z. Uh, so whatever the name is your variable, you have the address for it. Why do we want to include a space here is because unlike with reading in numbers where the percent %d will automatically skip white space and then try to read in a number, percent %lg will automatically skip white space and then try to read in a double. With percent %c, it doesn't automatically skip white space. And the reason is sometimes you actually want to read in those space characters. Um, but if you want to read in a non-space character, then you have to put a space at the beginning of your scanf format string. So it's just something to be aware of, like when you're doing percent %c, unless you're actually want to read in the space characters, you usually want to put a space before it. And finally, the one that's a little bit interesting here as well is a C string. So if I have C string, uh, I'm out of the alphabet, so I'll go back to the beginning, C string A. If I want to read in a string, I do use percent %s, so that's the same thing like I use for printf, but the difference is that I don't have to pass the address, I just pass A itself. Now why is that? For all these other ones, we have to pass in the address because we have to get a pointer value. So we have to have address of an int, address of a double, or address of um, a char. But why don't we have to do that here? Well, if you remember back to the last lesson, we mentioned that strings are actually represented and, and passed to functions as a pointer to a char. So the point is that this a, when we pass that to a function, that's already a pointer. Um, so we don't have to take the address of it again. And so the, for uh, s strings only, you just pass in the string because that's already going to be passed as a pointer. And for the other ones, you have to use the address of operator explicitly. Okay, so that's how scanf works. Um, it'll make your life a lot easier when you're, especially when you're reading in multiple things on the same line. And uh, this now allows us to not have to use write num, uh, or sorry, read num, like we would have had to for x and y here, or read char or read string. So those three functions are just part of the ic210.h header. We don't need them anymore because now we have scanf and fscanf, which can do the same job as before. Thank you.